I'm Joanne Banco, author and educator at Let's Go Sew. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite accessories is scarves, and especially pashmina scarves. In my book, I've got three different ones, and I show you some different embroidery designs and variations. There's a whole embroidery collection that co coordinates with the book, and it's designs that I use over and over and over again. So I featured one today on a pashmina, and I'm gonna walk you through that. Before I do, let me let you take a peek at the ones that I have here on the dress forms. Um, first two here are from the book, and when you look at both of these, you can see one of the things they have in common is that they are stitched on a silky fabric, stitched on a contrast fabric. And I like to do that because although some people have had success with embroidering directly on pashminas, there aren't a lot of designs that are suitable for that. And this opens up the door and gives me a whole lot more opportunities to embroider. And what I like to do is create a band and then embroider on the band. I have another method to my madness there and that is that when we look at the underside, the pashmina itself still looks beautiful because it's all clean, there's no embroidery or stabilizer showing on the back side. All of that is hidden on the back side of the band. So this is just a full um, piece here. This is done with small squares and trimmed with ribbon. And then the one I'm gonna feature today, I'm gonna show you um, a, a variation, kind of a twist between the two. This one is also done with squares and then trimmed with ribbon. So let's go back over to the table. Let me show you how it's done. I have stitched out my embroidery on silk dupioni. And silk dupioni is just one of those lovely, luxurious fabrics that uh, really make your garment or accessory look extra special. But the cream colored uh, pashmina that you see there, that is stitched on a synthetic fabric. So don't be afraid to experiment and try different things. I just happen to love the way Silk Du Peony is. I've brought a couple fabric samples here because my Silk Du Peony, before I use it on these pashminas, always gets washed. So. I have a special recipe that's included as a bonus in my book. I'm gonna just tell you a few clues on that. If you look though at the Silk Du Peony itself, this is prior to washing and you can see there's that stiffness and that crunchiness almost. That's beautiful for blouses and shirts and things like that, but I wanna maintain that softness, that same softness that I have with my pashmina. So I wash it and look at the difference in the hand there. Just look how soft and, and drapey that is. It looks, um, it looks beautiful when it's finished, but like I said, I've got some tricks um, as, as a bonus in there. My major trick is that I wash it and I iron it dry. So it's soaking wet when I, when I finished and then I iron it until it's dry. That seems to soften it up a little bit. So let's talk about the embroidery. I've selected a, a special design and my designs all coordinate with these fabrics so that they're not too heavy, they're not too stiff. And we always wanna do a test, so I recommend trying a couple different things. I've stitched this one uh, with no stabilizer whatsoever, and because the design combination, it worked out beautifully. On this one, I added a very soft bias interfacing to give it a little bit more body. And on this one, I'm just showing an example of an iron-on stabilizer. So experiment. If you're, um, when you're finished, if you don't have that nice softness, then try it again and take away a stabilizer until you get, get that effect. So I have actually embroidered six blocks. You can see, finished that one in the hoop. Used a beautiful color combination to coordinate with this. And I've already placed three blocks on the scarf. So I've centered them by, you know, dispersing it in, in thirds and I've already added some ribbon. I'm gonna show you how to stitch that in a minute, but let me talk about the ribbon. Because in my opinion, plain old ordinary ribbon just doesn't really cut it with this. I wanna keep that soft flexibility, so look at how that drapes in my hand. This is silk ribbon. It comes in lots of different colors. It's really quite reasonable, and it just sets that apart and makes it really, really beautiful. It's also washable. Um, check you know, with some of the darker colors to make sure, but I've washed mine with, without any issues. So let's head over to the machine. I'm gonna take the scarf. I have just finished doing my embroidery. So I'm in embroidery mode. I'm going to park the arm, we call that parking the arm, by going to the screen and just um, going right there and touching OK. So now I'm in the sewing mode. Now I've already snapped on my edge stitching foot and that's my secret foot for 
top stitching this ribbon. I like to use a, a very sharp fine needle so that I don't puncture holes in there. But I've already stitched the ribbon on, to cover all the raw edges of those squares on the sides. Now I'm going to show you how I stitch it on the with the edge joining foot on the edges here. So if you maybe looked at that, you might have noticed no pins. I have no pins in here. Well, I certainly pinned it to start with. I used glass head pins. And then I went ahead and hand basted it. I like to say there's a time and a place to baste, but if we do basting, then we can take away those pins. We don't have the distortion factor, keeps that nice and smooth. So I've got my needle, let's see where it's set. Well, how do I know? I'm gonna go ahead and turn that laser light on and I can see right where that is. It's a little too close to that edge, so I'm gonna bump it over and wherever the light is, I can then move the needle. So I'm gonna coordinate those two and away we go. So watch as I stitch this very carefully. I've got, with the edge joining foot, a blade on the foot that's right in the center. That allows me to just look at the blade and look at the edge of the ribbon. I might wanna smooth that out just a little bit, make that nice and taut. But as long as I just guide that through with the edge of the ribbon on the edge of the foot, well, looks like I'm just a little, little off here. Let's move that over. I would suggest doing a test. I skipped that step because I'm trying to hurry a little bit for you. But if you test it, you're going to see right where that should be. Let me move that over just a little bit. And that's just going to be about perfect. Now, I would most likely use the light gray thread. Instead, I'm using navy today so that you can see this really good. Okay. And smooth that out so we don't have too much bulk here. I love the way I can just park the arm on this and not have to worry about taking that embroidery unit off. I just switch to sewing and I'm good to go and ready to sew. Okay, we're almost at the end there. Be careful you don't catch your fringe in there. You don't want to have fringe caught up in that. All right, I think I'll take this out so I can show you what I've done so far. Okay, we'll get that part there you can see. Smooth this out. And just look at how beautiful that is right along the edge. So I would continue, I would flip it around. Now if I'm um, doing on the other side, I might adjust my foot a little bit, or I'm, I'm sorry, adjust my stitch a little bit to coordinate with that foot. Because you see what a, what a great benefit it is to have that, have that edge joining. So when I'm done, I would do the opposite end exactly the same way. And let's just take another look at the pashminas that I have on the dress forms here so I can tell you a few more things that I've done. Silk ribbon. I was talking about silk ribbon, and I've got another width here that's only about a quarter of an inch wide. So on this band, what I did is instead of doing pieces, I did a whole big piece, divided it up, used a narrow ribbon, and then I just zigzagged over it so it looks almost like it's pieced together. So it's just a, a faux look. On this one, I did the exact same thing. I just used ribbons to cover the raw edges. That gives it a perfect, clean finish. Then you see the finished one here. So they're all very similar, just a little twist on the technique. Pashminas are just such a great wardrobe extender. They make a great gift, and they're something everyone would enjoy to just give you that cozy little bit of added luxury. So be sure to visit the website. We've got free instructions for you to show how we did the variation here today. And I hope you enjoy making your own beautiful, luxurious pashmina scarf.